So the 2024 Yankees are definitely not the 2023 Yankees. And that's a good thing. What's going on, everybody? Sorry I did not go live after today's game. I was uh, getting my drop my car off to get it inspected. So, but with that said, the Yankees have scored 30 runs in the last two games. Okay, 30 runs in the last two games against a, against a, a, a first place team in the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay, they won the last two games, they won the series two out of three. Now they're heading into Baltimore for a four game set against the Orioles with some momentum. And when I say this is, you know, this team is not like last year's, I, and it is a good thing. You know, I mean that the Yankees are well equipped to come back from losses. You know, the Yankees are making roster moves and responding to them. You know, they're making, they're, they're moving guys up and down in the lineup and players are responding to them. We didn't have that last year. We didn't have that the year before. And that's important. You know, they move Rizzo and Torres down in the lineup. They move Verdugo up. They've all responded accordingly. Now, Torres is hitting the ball now. Okay. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Aaron Judge is hitting the ball. Hopefully that's a sign of things to come. We needed these two guys to pick up the momentum. They're picking up the momentum. Volpe's starting to come around too. So at the right time, these guys are really starting to come around against our biggest test of the season, the Baltimore Orioles. And it's going to be a very, very, very important series. We'll see what happens here. But the Yankees right now are in first place. Okay, 19-10 and 10 record. And I couldn't be more excited about where the Yankees stand right now. I don't care what happens with the Orioles series. I'm very excited. I didn't. I I wasn't sure that the Yankees were going to be a 500 team by the end of April, but they were. You know, the schedule doesn't doesn't get much easier in May, especially at the end of May when they go on a pretty vicious West Coast trip towards the end of the month. So, but with that said, the Yankees are positioned to win more series, win more games. Okay, and if they have a month like they did this month, it could be 38 and 20, 18 games over 500. I'd say that's a pretty good month if they even get close to that. So, but you let me know what your thoughts are. And again, you know, last year's Yankees team was not equipped to do anything like this. And I've talked this, you know, I I was on NFE's live stream earlier today. I thank you, NFE, for having me. I was on there with Rich as well. And we were talking about this too, you know, about the, you know, last year's Yankee team, you know, you could smell a 21 out of 25 game losing streak where you can, I can smell a 20, 20, 21 out of 25 game winning streak this year. It's a different vibe. It's a different feel. And the way they have the lineup is constructed, the way the roster is constructed. And we have reinforcements coming back. I know, you know, and I'm pretty confident when I say that they're waiting for um, John Birdie and DJ LeMay to come back to starting to give some guys a rest. Okay? Waiting for Garrett Cole to come back and some of the relievers to come back. And we'll get some more sh a big-time shot in the arm with a lot of reinforcements that are already here. So, and it's going to make the Yankees even stronger and harder to beat. Especially when getting some more weapons in the bullpen, but it's it's I, I I'm very happy with this. But I, you know, I want to know what your thoughts are. Okay, whether you agree, whether you disagree, you know, whether you want, just want to have basic Yankee talk, whether you want to join the live streams and, and really really get into deep discussions. When we do that as well, and we do that on a regular basis. Okay, um, make sure that you're sub to this channel if you're not subbed yet. Okay, and make sure you hit the notification button too. That's all you gotta do. I thank you so much for it. I'll make sure you know when we go live. I'll make sure that you know when news comes out and everything else. And I thank you so much again. It means the world. And we're, you know, we're, we're approaching 21,000 subs. So your support is greatly appreciated. Uh, but this is a good statement to say. And so many folks are spending so much time having tantrums about what, why Clay Holmes didn't pitch a second inning the other day. When he, not, that wouldn't have guaranteed that they would have won the game. You know, never mind the fact that they're in the middle of 17 consecutive game uh, games in 17 days without a schedule off day. Okay, there are 100 and, almost 135 games left in the season. Okay, 19 and 10 with the 29, so 133 games left in the season. Okay, and we have to keep these guys healthy. So that's a good thing as well. And, you know, with regards to Clay Holmes, he is on schedule. He's on pace to far exceed his his career innings pitched. You know, and so every, with, the, without the, with the exception of the 2021 season, when he was traded to the Yankees, he had never pitched more than 63 innings in a season. 
He was on pace for 80 plus. That I remember how you know innings pitch increases like that did to pick guys like Nestor Cortez, did to some other folks. Okay, they've gotten injured. They suffered injuries, and the last thing we want is for our closer, Clay Holmes, to get injured, especially when we need it. Okay, I'd rather rest him now so that we don't have to rest him as much in September and October. Okay, I want him fresh when it counts the most. Okay, and keeping him in for an extra inning would not have guaranteed the win. You know, it would have the bats. They are the ones that did not perform, did not score. Okay, but I got to give credit to the bats. You know, our three, four, five has been pretty stagnant for the last several weeks, unproductive. Last couple of days, different story. Ever since, and especially since they move Verdugo to the cleanup and move Rizzo down six and, and Torres down seven, these guys have positively responded to it. And that's the difference between this team and, and last year's team as well. We didn't have the personnel to make these types of moves and positively respond to it with productive play. So that's a difference. Okay. Juan Soto's rubbing off on teammates. Marcus Stroman's rubbing off on teammates. Alex Verdugo's rubbing off on teammates. Okay. These guys are feeding off each other. You could see how tight knit this group is. Okay. And to me, that matters more than anything else. You know, I spend less time complaining about ridiculous stuff like Clay Holmes and an extra inning and worrying about the fact that they just scored dirty runs and they won both games against a first place team. That's more important. But people are entitled to, you know, think whatever they want to think. But, you know, and whether people agree with me or not, it's totally cool. Okay. But this right here, you know, the, the Yankees have showed these last two games that just how dangerous they can be. When they start clicking on all cylinders and they're not, they're, they're not there yet, but they're getting there. We still need some pieces back. They're going to be even better. And that to me is a very, very encouraging thing. I want to know what your thoughts are. Okay, load up the comments. Let's talk about this. All right. Um, tomorrow, Baltimore Orioles. Okay. I think it's Clark Schmidt uh, against uh, Grayson Rodriguez tomorrow. I'm going to look this up right now before I leave. Um, they are, yeah, they are, they're in Baltimore, by the way. They can't, they can't for the next four. They play 635 tomorrow night. Clark Schmidt, 2-0, 355 Gray versus Grayson Rodriguez, 3-1 and before 445 ERA. Okay. They did send down Jackson Holiday, so we won't be able to see him unless he gets called back up for the series. Um, but I'm not surprised. You know, highly talented prospects. They will have their growing pains. They will need to progress. They will need to develop. And the team is good enough so that they don't have to throw them to the Wolves up in the major league level. They can let them go back to AAA. He harness his skills even more and then come back up when they need him. So we'll see him at some point this year. I'm confident of that. But... You know, this is this is going to be an epic clash of two AL East Titans right now. And I'm very, very excited. But I want to know what your thoughts are. But this, my point tonight, is 2024 Yankees is not the same as 2023 Yankees in so many ways. I understand, you know, some couple, you know, unproductive outs or losing a you know, shutout or whatever. And it makes, gives people a little 2023 vibe. I get that. But this is not the same team. They're 19 and 10, okay, despite those things, without uh, Cole, without, you know, Judge and Torres and all these guys hitting. Now they're just starting to hit, okay? You know, the Yankees were, I think, 16 and 12 last year, 15 and 12, before they lost Aaron Judge. And then, therefore, they lost Jan Carl Stanton, too. So, and then all the wheels fell off. Everything after, everything fell off to, you know, after that for them, unfortunately. So, and they had an 82 to 80, 82 and 80 record. This team is much better positioned to have a better record than that. But, you know, they are a stacked team in a league full of stacked teams. And this is going to be a bloodbath from the to the very end. So stay tuned, gang. Okay, but the Yankees, 30 runs, two games, two wins. Be excited. Okay? Think about the little stuff. Don't stress about it. You don't need to. Go Yankees.